Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, today at 1.46 p.m. tweeted the following. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. Yeah, we've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation and lowering prescription drug costs for seniors and expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. That deserves a rap report drop there. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president, and while it has been my intent to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president— for the remainder of my term, I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together, we just have to remember we are the United States of America, signed Joe Biden. Now, absent Came, from that initial we saw, announcement, he died. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, absent from that initial announcement, of course, was an endorsement of Kamala Harris, which raised some eyebrows at first, but it was forthcoming at 2.13. So how we some... got that part wrong? Yes, Halperin did get that part wrong. Uh, Mark Halperin said on Friday, uh, or on Thursday, rather, uh, that Joe Biden would be uh, stepping down as the nominee uh, by Sunday, likely Sunday, which he was correct about. But he did say he would not endorse Kamala Harris, and uh, the written statement did not endorse Kamala Harris. Maybe he forgot that because about 17 minutes later, he tweets out, My fellow Democrats... I've decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president, and it's been the best decision I've made. It almost was a good enough decision to uh, keep me as the nominee, but I got forced out anyway. Uh, wow. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. So there God, you have God, it. God, help us all. I have, uh, I have spotted my first I'm with her laid over a picture of Kamala. Well, there you go. It has begun. Joe Biden withdraws from the race and endorses Kamala Harris. And um, I know I said this earlier in the stream, but I got to say this for the clip you know, last year when we did our prediction show, I predicted this just out of intuition. I just couldn't see Joe Biden's name. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Exactly. I couldn't see it. I couldn't, I could not envision a future with Joe Biden's name on the ballot. Again, partly because of the state he was in and the um, just hunch that it would get worse to the point where he would have to step down. Uh, and after the debate, as soon as you saw that roundtable of John King saying, you know, there's panic in the party, Chuck Todd, the people are calling me and saying, you know, he's got to get out. That means your days are numbered. There's only so much pressure you can withstand. And I also predicted, I'm sorry to keep patting myself on the back, but there's the old saying, um, if you're not for yourself, who will be? If you're only for yourself, who are you? If you're not for yourself, who I'm will for be? you, Keith. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Russell's for me. Russell's for me. Um, but the other part of this that I think I predicted was that it would take the top brass to get him out. I think originally you saw the names like Schumer, Pelosi, Schiff, Obama staying silent because they didn't really want to have to go on record saying that he's not fit because on the off chance, 
that uh, he was just so stubborn a prick that he didn't get out, then that would be sounds that the Republicans could play on a loop till November. Obama says Biden's not fit. Schumer right. says Biden's not fit. Um, so unfortunately, from their point of view, it did come to that. The the foot soldiers, the the lightweights in the party uh, were not enough to, to convince Joe Biden he had to step aside, but they were. They were. They, he, he could not withstand that kind of pressure from the upper crust of the Democratic Party because once they go on record against you, the funding dries up. I mean, you literally can't run a campaign right. for free. You right. can't right. put ads together. You can't put events together. You, you can't do anything without money. And when the leadership voices a vote of no confidence against you, the money dries up. And once that happens, you, you simply cannot will your way through the campaign. You can't do it. And he knows that. And uh, he, so he gave in. Yeah, he's uh, he's such an incredible asshole. He, he, he's at, at his core. There was a possibility that he would force them to have a choice. Support yes. my candidacy or, you know, you have no candidate this year. Well, but he almost did he that. Didn't, he didn't he go He bluffed that like way. he was going to. He bluffed yeah. like he was going to be it on the trail this week. He said, yep. I intend to hit the trail yep. this week. So he bluffed. Yep. He tried. He gave it. He he ran to that last inch of runway. Yeah. Right. Right. And he he got his uh, he got his shills in uh, different voting communities to talk about the way their choice was being removed. He tried to hide. I mean, I mean, look, he's been a, he's been a Democrat for a long time. He knows how Democrats operate. When you're in a tough spot, grab some black and brown people and throw them out as cannon fodder to uh to push forward your project uh so he did that that was one of his final gambits too you had the latino caucus coming out and saying this is removing our choice um which you know not a bad play not a bad play if there's anything that's going to scare the kenty cloth people it's going to be stuff like that but not enough not enough because they got barack that's right what are you gonna say what are you gonna say exactly Exactly. He is the boss. He he is the Don. Now, there was some speculation that Hillary Clinton was angling for a run, and it was always just speculation. Yeah, I never took it seriously. I never took it seriously. I never took it seriously. Although they the love one stories thing stories like that's clickbait. Of course. Of course. But the, the one thing that did make me think maybe she is angling to run is that Hillary and Bill were the last holdouts for Joe Biden. They said to the bitter end, no, we're with Joe. And then when he dropped out, the thought occurred to me, because if there are two people as scummy and as Machiavellian as to play it this way, it's those two. Did Bill and Hillary stick with Biden to the end in the hopes that he might throw some of his weight in her direction? But that was not to be, because Biden endorsed Kamala, and now Bill and Hillary Clinton endorse Kamala Harris in this text. We are certainly not going to waste precious time reading that. Barack Obama <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama uh, comes out. Joe Biden has been one of America's most consequential presidents, as well as a dear friend and partner to be. Today, we've also been reminded again that he's a patriot of the highest order. Here's my full statements. Okay, so we're not going to read his full statement either, but we will read a piece from his Medium post, which nothing says Obama. It is so fitting that Obama is on Medium because nothing screams Obama era like Medium. You know, it's like one of yeah. th that was popular in 2013. Nobody's they're, they're, used it. They, they are so desperate to get your five bucks a month, and no, exactly. nobody, nobody bites. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like nobody uses it except him anymore. Uh, but what's notable about his statement here? We will be navigating uncharted waters in the days ahead, but I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. I believe that Joe Biden's vision of a generous, prosperous, and united America that provides opportunity for everyone will be on full display at the Democratic Convention in August. Wow. And I expect that every single one of us are prepared to carry that message of hope and progress forward into November and beyond. So there's uh, Barack Obama notably not endorsing Kamala Harris. So he, uh, the only big name really not to jump out uh, and endorse Harris. Kamala Harris confirms she is ready and willing 
to, uh, you know, take the reins here. On behalf of the American people, I thank Joe Biden for his extraordinary leadership <laughs> as president of the United States and for his decades of service to our country. I am honored to have the president's endorsement, and my intention is to earn and win this nomination. So well, she is running. Look, to paraphrase Les Moonves, the former president of CBS, a Trump-Harris race is bad for the country, but it's very good for podcasters. That so is true. So run, baby, run. The only thing that could make this better would be if her and Buttigieg got into a bitch fight. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Well, that's not going to happen. No, He's not going to challenge no, her. No, nobody's going to. No. Nobody uh, of any note no. is, is going to No, if you fracture the party's in. unity, you're yeah. going to be uh, persona non grata going forward. No, These it, people have long memories. Elizabeth Warren is still trying to get a job as uh, head of maintenance at the White House. Yes, yes. It, it looks very much like uh, it's going to be her. Donald Trump weighed in. Crooked Joe Biden was not fit to run for president and is certainly not fit to serve and never was. He only attained the position of president by lies, fake news, and not leaving his basement. All those around him, including his doctor and the media, knew that he wasn't capable of being president, and he wasn't. And now look what he's done to our country <laughs> with millions of people coming across our border, totally unchecked and unvetted many from prisons, mental institutions, and record numbers of terrorists. We will suffer greatly because of his presidency, but we will remedy the damage he has done very quickly. Make America great again. So there's the opponents. We're going to fix it so fast. Believe me, people are not going to believe how fast we're going to fix it. You're not going to believe how fast we fixed it. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be fantastic. People are going to um, say they've never seen anything like it. That's right. Uh, and then the last piece uh, of uh, this segment here, just a funny little uh, nugget of information. Biden's announcement stunned White House and campaign aides who up until this afternoon were insisting he'd stay in the race. We're all finding out by tweet, says one Dem. <laughs> None of us understand what's well, happening. Well, that is fitting, isn't it? Yep. Blindsided, they should have taken Mark Halperin's reporting seriously. So Mark Halperin reported on Thursday in advance of Donald Trump's speech that he had it from reliable sources that Biden would be dropping out over the weekend, probably Sunday, which ended up being right. Uh, he said that John Meacham was crafting a speech, which Meacham then denied. We don't know if Meacham had a hand in writing that letter. My guess is he probably did. Um, since that seems like the thing that he would do. If you write the speeches, you would write that as a written statement. Um, but Come on, the John, only thing throw me a bone. This is my not a molester anymore big moment. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the only the only uh bit of information that he got wrong there was that Biden had no plans to endorse Harris. And and that ended up happening. But but aside from that. He had it right, and uh, people called him a liar. The people who called him a liar were apparently lying themselves. And I always yep. thought there was a chance that that was the case because, as I said, you don't go from we're running, we're running, we're running to, well, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not to we're not running. You go from we're running, we're running, we're running to never mind, we're not running. Because the maybe phase is an admission that you're not running. You can't run a right. campaign. You can't take donations saying, yeah, maybe we're going to drop out. Right. And so it was going to be we're all in no matter what anybody says. Anybody who says differently, we're going to just say they're lying. They're full of shit. Deny, deny, deny until you come out and say, actually, they were right and we're mm -hmm. out. And that's what he did. And that's where you're at. So now you are in a situation and we're going to do a full segment later in the show about what might come next. But. You are in interesting times now, my friends. Interesting times. Joe Biden outs. Uh, quite the remarkable thing. Quite the remarkable thing, especially since Kamala Harris seems poised to take the reins. And this is the third Democratic primary in a row that has been a complete and total sham. Uh, now, it is, of course, a matter of standard course for the incumbent to basically have the option of running again and when the incumbent decides to seek re-election there is never much of a primary but in this case in this case what happened again exactly what i said was going to happen they're going to keep him on through the primary calendar 
so that their voters do not have a say in who the next nominee is. And now the voters do not have a say. This now goes to the delegates who have already pledged to Joe Biden. They are now released to vote for whoever they want, asterisk, whoever gathers enough signatures among the delegates to submit themselves for nomination. Who do you think Biden delegates are going to be inclined to vote for? Yeah, there's not going to be a contest here. There's, there's no not going to be a contest. Yeah. They they were talking about a mini primary. Yeah, that's not going to happen because it, now the the establishment always wanted Kamala. They always wanted her. They were so they were so it was never supposed to be Biden in 2020. It was supposed to be her. That's right. Um, this really shows you how little say people have. They started talking about Kamala as soon as Hillary lost. They were yep. they started floating her. They made it clear she was the establishment pick so completely lacking in political skills. She had to drop out before New Hampshire because she was she was what in fourth place in California in fifth. her home state. She fifth. was polling fourth fifth behind Yang. Yeah, she was polling fifth. But hey, man, they just went and made her vice president uh, with, with a with a guy with one foot in the grave made her the heir apparent and now they get what they want anyway i don't think they'll get the presidency part but uh they pushed her pretty far for somebody who's you know so creepy you would not let her give your kids candy uh you know it's pretty good to <laughs> have her running for president when the entire public emphatically had no interest in that yeah, they maneuvered her to the nomination, which was yeah. their intention in 2020. Fuck and, you, peasants. Uh, now they got their what, wish. What, do you think you have a say? Do you yeah. think you have a say? We want Kamala, and we shall have Kamala. You will have Kamala. Exactly. Party of democracy, everybody. Party of democracy. Please clap.